see the mountain of their sins just disappear.
Hallelujah. Amen. Let's testify. Let's testify. What a wonderful God. What a wonderful Savior. Hallelujah. Every praise is to our God.
Hallelujah. How many is here to surrender to the King? How many just say, I want to let go and let God have His way in this service, in my life, and every part of this place? Amen. What a mighty God we serve. What a great God we serve. Amen. It's so good to be in the house of the Lord and to be with you once again. And I'm just expecting great things tonight. I hope you brought your expectation. How many is expecting something? Amen. Well, you're going to get what you expect. Hallelujah. Because he's that kind of God and he's more than able to meet any expectation. The Bible says he can do even exceedingly abundantly, more than you can ever ask. So whatever you come with a big truck, he'll fill it up. Come with a Tonka toy, he'll fill it up. But whatever you come with tonight, just expect I'm going home filled. Amen. With what I have need of. Amen. We have some prayer requests here today. Uh, we understand Sister Erica has actually been admitted to the hospital with some fluid on her body and swelling in her legs and such. Amen. What do we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Amen. Our God's more than able, even now. It doesn't matter. Amen. I, as far as I know, he healed, a God, he healed a man that was four days dead. Brought him back to life. Organs all worked. Everything was working properly and great. He's that kind of God. So I don't limit my expectations on my own thoughts or things. I, I put it upon the word and what he's already done. What he's done is what he does. Amen. He's the healer and the deliverer. Amen. So we have a Jeremy Russell that's suffering with uh, severe gout and needs salvation. Also a Jackie Snyder that's um, having a very bad coughing spells. Doctors can't find out what the issue. Uh, so we want to take these needs before the Lord. Amen. We're going to ask Brother Matt McClard if he'd come and open our service in prayer. He's been with us this weekend, has to travel home in the morning and uh, be at home and work on Monday. And I just want to say we appreciate you coming and being a part of our meetings. And, amen. We appreciate Brother Matt. I know our young people sure appreciate him and, and his enthusiasm for the Lord and the things of God. And we're thankful for men of God. I'm thankful for a real man of God that will put the shoulder to the wheel and, and push, the, push the cart down the road, so to speak. And so, amen. How many is here to believe? Amen. How many is here to have faith in God? Believe that God's a healer, a deliverer, salva salvation, whatever you have need of, just believe. Only believe all things are possible. Amen. Let's pray together. Amen. You know, Brother Brandon would tell us, you come in those doors, you're either going to leave better or worse. And the Bible tells us if we agree, touching any one thing, let's agree tonight together. I'm leaving better out those doors. I'm coming for something, and I'm leaving with something. I love you. Let's bow our heads. Father, what an honor to be together with my family, Lord. Lord, many mouths separate us. But, Father, we are the family of God, bought with a price. And, Father, we've come together in this end time not to be defeated, but to whip the devil on every front and have a smile on our face and be joyous. Father, it's not a few more weariest days. It's a few more victorious days. And, Father, we're looking for victories tonight, Father. Not just for myself, but for everyone that's in this building, Father. We just ask you to move mightily, Lord Jesus. Have thine own way. Father, I ask you to strengthen Brother Ron, Lord, more than you've ever strengthened him, Lord. May virtue come to his body right now, Father. May you use him in a mighty way, Lord. Move the man of God out of the way. Father, use him, Lord, to speak, Father. And, Lord, I pray for faith in the building to, to come, Lord. Lord, every for you, Lord, God, may faith begin to grow, Lord. All things are possible tonight, Father. God, I pray for each one. And Satan, I just want to let you know you already lost the battle. And we're going to dance all over your head tonight. We're going to have victory. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, amen and amen. Amen. Let's just turn around and welcome each other here to the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen.
ask the brothers they would to take the offering this evening to give us unto the Lord. Amen. My, 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 what a joy to serve my Jesus. <clears throat> my, 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 what a joy. to come bring her special this evening we'll let you be seated but after she's through brother Caleb Atkins if you'd come sing for us and amen right after he's through brother Tim winners I don't see him in here but if you'll let him know be ready amen or sister Courtney is she in here there she is amen let's just worship the Lord together as they sing Don't know what tomorrow holds, but I know who holds tomorrow. Sure, I don't know what the future brings, but I know the one who knows everything. So no matter.
to this one thing I know. And if he sees If I'm only here to tell you one story, it's that God can work anything for good. The way that he writes it is glory to glory, page for page, no matter how it looks. If you need a highway through the sea, your mountain to be moved he did it for me he can do it for you 
He's a God of endless miracles. There ain't nothing He can't do. He did it for me. He can do it for you. I know you've been asking, faithfully praying, but somehow He can make the wrong things right. Heaven's been listening. Something is changing, so let me be the first to testify. If you need a highway through the sea, your mountain to be moved, he did it for me. He can do it for you. He's a God of endless miracles, there ain't nothing. If you need breakthrough, he did it for me. He can do it for you. If you need freedom, a holy rescue, he did it for me. He can do it for you. If he did it for me. If 
everything around us just says there is no hope. I'm never gonna let go.
Praise God. What a message we have tonight. It's a message that inspires faith to believe for every promise of God. As I was just reading here this in that last couple of days, going over a few things about the supernatural gospel that God has sent in this last day. How an angel came to a man in a cabin, Brother Branham. An angel would come to him, tell him about his mysterious life, his misunderstood ways, commission him to bring a message of divine healing. He would tell us, the angel would say, the coming of the Lord is near. That's our message. We are here in the coming of the Lord. It is a message of healing, not just for the body, but it would also heal us of our denominational ideas and, and, the, and the theories of man. And it would straighten it, that, those things out and bring a healing to the body of Christ and cause us to be in love with Jesus with all our hearts. The angel said, nothing would stand before your prayers, not even cancer. That's the way our message started. It came with a commission to pray for the sick, to lead to, to, to cast out devils, which is praying for the sick, healing the sick. As we are here tonight, I think about 15 years ago, I was commissioned to go and travel across the country to go and visit Brother Ron Spencer who had been burned in a horrible fire and he was dying. The doctors had given him up. There was no hope. But I walked into his hospital room and I said, I have not come to anoint you for death. I have come to anoint you for life. We prayed there, carrying all the prayers of all the saints had been praying. We carried them in that room with us. And God gloriously raised him up to preach the gospel. Now, about three and a half years ago, he got the news that, that he had stage four cancer and that they only gave him three months to live. Well, we've seen that no doctor nor any devil can put a period to your life. It is God who decides those things. And God has raised him up and used him for the glory of God to preach the gospel now, carrying it around, used like never before. And I want to just testify tonight that the message that started out with, a, with an admonition that not even cancer would stand before this truth of this word, that we are here tonight to reaffirm that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. We got the nation Israel that is under attack. All kinds of things that are happening there and you know where the enemy has come in and women and children pulled out in the streets, out of their homes, out of their beds, and killed, taken captive, all kinds of things that are going on right now, chaos. You see, that's Israel natural, but Israel spiritual. The devil wants to do the same thing. He wants to come into your home and to your family or into your church and drag you out in the streets and haul you away captive or kill your loved ones or your family. But I'll just tell you tonight, we are at war. And we're here to do battle. We're here to stand on a word of promise. God has given us this land and we are possessors of the enemy's gates and we will not back up. We will not retreat. We will not give up land. We will not let go of one promise of God, but we will see complete and total deliverance. Tonight, 
tonight, as we prepare for this service, where faith will be built, testimonies will be given. These testimonies are not to glorify a man. These testimonies are to lift up the name of Jesus Christ, where that you can see that this is not a God of history. This is a present God, that he's right here now, right now in this building to meet your need, to speak to your heart, to reveal himself to you, to fill you with the Holy Ghost, to drive out the spirits of the enemy that would be in your life, that would be tormenting us. And we're here tonight to do battle. My sword is drawn. My sword is sharp. He has commissioned us to cast out devils. No, no weapon that's formed against us can prosper. We're the children of the Most High God. We will drive them back. We will take every promise. Are you ready for that? As Brother Branham would be commissioned to pray for the sick, he would take this news of this visitation to the bishop of the, of the Missionary Baptist Church that was kind of over the churches. And he would mock and make fun of it and said, you know, it'll never happen. You, seventh grader, take a gospel around the world. You, you know, you just had a dream. You go back to sleep and get a good night's rest. Your mind is overactive. And he said, Brother Roy Davis, if you don't want it, got to have somebody that will believe it. I'm looking at those somebody right here that believes it. And around the world that are joining in with us right now that believe it. We believe that message. A little bit confused when the message was rejected. A couple of days later, there was a man that got off of a bus and here is he kind of looked around bewildered and Brother Branham was there to cash his check downtown and in Jeffersonville it was on a Friday afternoon and he noticed this man get off the bus he come over and said sir said are you a local do you can you help me I because he, he said yeah I said I, I I've lived here all my life and he said well I, 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 maybe you can help me find someone. And he said, well, who is it? He said, well, I had a strange experience. I live 200 miles from here, down in Paducah, Kentucky. And he said, last night I had a dream and an angel came and stepped out of a light and said, go to Jeffersonville, Indiana and ask for a man by the name of Branham and he will pray for you. Said, sir, I've been sick for now for two years and I can't get over it. Said then, and Brother Branham put his arm around him. He said, sir, that angel met me the other day in the cabin and commissioned me to pray for the sick. He knew right then that that angel was at work. He would tell the testimony to his own church and that night they would they would sing this song for the first time, Only Believe, All Things Are Possible. And as he heard that song sung, the angel of God drew near and he knew it was a song the angel would like to hear. And they would sing the different verses of it. He would tell of this healing and the man came up in his church had been flash burned with welding and his eyes was burned it would be oh, almost a couple of weeks before he could go back to work but he walked up to brother Branham and said brother Branham I believe that pray for me he prayed for him he went back to work the next day and he was his boss then would come and say his boss was Mr. Morgan come and said Charlie or you know, why are you back to work? Said, I, I, I thought you would be off for a while. You, you were burned. And he said, my pastor prayed for me last night. And Jesus Christ has healed me. He said, do you think he 
help my wife. She's laying dying in the hospital. Her name is Margie. He said, I, I don't know, but why don't you just bring her to church on Wednesday night? Accompanied by her doctor, laying on a cot. They had brought Margie into the meeting. She was barely conscious. And Brother Branham took her by the hand like the angel told him to with his left hand, with her right, and he immediately felt for the first time that gift began to work, where that he could tell the diseases that was in her body. And he said, what is this? What has she got? He said, she's got cancer. And he prayed for her, and it stopped. The life went out of the cancer. And, and uh, immediately a vision came, and he saw her as a nurse going and tending to her patients, and he said, thus saith the Lord, she will live and not die. Her doctor protested, but you don't know, sir, her condition. We did surgery on her. We opened her up from the breast all the way down and said it's so wrapped around her colon and her intestines till she can't even have a bowel movement. We can't even get it removed with an enema. She's a dying woman. He said, I don't care what her condition is. I didn't say that, God did. She began to eat and she raised up from there. She became a well woman. But it was from there. I wanna, I wanna say to you, the very first time the gift worked, the very time, first time the gift was manifested, it was on a cancer, and it was defeated. I'm just telling you tonight, not even cancer, not even one of the most world, worst fear diseases, everything has to bow to the name of Jesus Christ. That's how our message started. That is our root. That's what we do. We believe. So with all your heart tonight, let's come in faith, believing as Brother Ron comes. If you've never seen a miracle, you'll see a miracle in this pulpit tonight. God using him like he never has. God bless you, Brother Ron, as you come. Oh, believe. Have you come under expectation tonight? Maybe you have a need on your heart just now. Great or small, he knows every situation. Maybe it's a lost loved one. Maybe you're sitting here as a prodigal, running, running. Maybe can't even explain why you're here. But the greatest miracle is the eternal 
now let's just talk to him just now. Heavenly Father, how we love you with all of our hearts. We thank you for this time, this moment here. Now, Lord, we, we ask you now that you would anoint our hearts. We have come, we have prayed, we have prepared. Not only as a speaker, but Lord, we have taken our position in this place. Now, Father, we ask you to pass by our way. Just one touch from you will make all the difference in the world. Now, Lord, forgive us of our sins and our mistakes. We invite the holy angel of God to sweep by our way. Lord, there's nothing impossible with you. Lord, and today we ask you that you administer, bless this audience, bless Brother Tim and Brother Timothy and the ministers here, this church. Thank you for this meeting. Thank you for all that it means. Thank you for every person, no matter how far that they have come. We ask you tonight, Lord, and we give you glory for everything. For no man is a healer. You did that, Father. Lord, we ask you that the champion of champions would come this evening. Touch our hearts now in Jesus Christ's name. Lord, I want to report to you, I believe. I believe with all my hearts. Amen. Amen and amen. God bless you. I don't believe you could have a better introduction than that one. What an atmosphere in the building already. So good to see each and every one of you. I understand some of you have already been here two hours before the service, and thank you for that. It's kind of a Branham meeting. We're under expectation for him to come. And uh, we know we're just at the last moments of time, and, and we're getting ready to go home. And we're just so thankful for that. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. And so glad to have my family with me today and Sister Connie and, and uh, Brother Matthew and Sister Cassie. This is the first time in, since he was 17 years old, Brother Matthew has been here. And, uh, and so the last time he was here, they carried him out. He received the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues. And may it happen again tonight. Amen. My grandchildren are here. Brother Andrew's daughter, Reagan, and India, Titus over here. And we're so glad to have them. And then my, my baby girl uh, is here. Miss Zoe is in the building, and we're expecting a miracle for her tonight. Miss Whitney prayed about four months ago, and God spoke to her heart for her to come to this meeting. that she would get a miracle. And so I'm under expectation for that to happen this afternoon. And, and for those that don't know the story of Isaac, Isaac is our little vision boy, it, impossible to have, have a child. And, and Isaac, Isaac Jackson Breeden came into the earth. I don't know where he's standing at. Amen. Come up here quick, Isaac. We're not in no great big hurry. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. You've heard the story of Abraham and Isaac. This is Ron and Isaac. They said it was impossible. And three years before, we saw the vision of him walking through the yard and had his finger up in the air. And we proclaimed it, and the devil whispered in our ears for three years, but boo, devil. Boo devil. So if you're expecting a miracle tonight. <laughs> hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is Isaac's, this is Isaac's first time in Louisiana. They, they probably didn't see you over here. <laughs> now he wore his bow tie because he wanted to be like Paul Paul. Amen. Enjoy the service, baby. Love you. Thank you for coming. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 That makes my heart pump, 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 pump. 
Amen. God bless you. If you will turn with me to Matthew chapter 6 and verse 9. I'd like to speak to you too for you for a little while on he is in the room. And I'm believing not just an if, but I know he's here. Amen. I'd like for you to read this with me tonight. Matthew chapter 6, verse 9. It's the Lord's Prayer. And after this manner, therefore pray ye, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Isaiah chapter 53, verse 1. Not reading it just because it's a tradition or even for redundance, but this is God's word. It's his prescription and it's his cure. Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, as a root out of dry ground, and he hath no form nor comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows, acquainted with grief. And we hid as if it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Can you read this with us now? Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken and smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. Hallelujah. Mark chapter 16 and verse 15 gives us the authority to have a service like this tonight. And he said unto them, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, and he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. How many believers are in the building now? In my name shall they cast out devils, and they shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. And they shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Brother Branham begins to prayer, and he says this, and I think it's a, an incredible prayer. Satan, you are a defeated being. You have no legal rights to begin with to torment these people. You're a bluff, and we're calling your bluff. Jesus Christ defeated you in his death and resurrection. His blood paid for, for his blood paid every price of sin that you coaxed the family of human race into. And now we are sons and daughters again. And his anointed spirit is speaking with us this evening. And as he did with Adam in the cool of the evening, therefore you cannot hold these Christians any longer. I adjure thee by the living God that you depart from these sick people and come out of them that they can go from this building tonight free from sickness, with a faith that's so predominating, it'll drive out of their thoughts in the realms. And in the name of Jesus Christ, I commission Satan to leave these people. These diseases in the form of a disease, which is the devil, to depart from these people through Jesus Christ's name. Hallelujah. Do you believe it? 
Hasn't these last two services been incredible? I just really enjoyed just, just sitting and listening as the word has went forth, and it's just touched my heart over and over again. Brother Branham would make the statement, he said, and he swore by himself. He said, he said, listen, I'm going to say something. Faith is unconscious. He said, you believe it. He said, I've learned that in the years of travel around the world and meeting peoples of all different walks. But faith is unconscious. You've got faith that you don't even know it. Jesus Christ, no matter if he is in a storm and the gales was knocking the boat from one side to the other and he was standing in the face of, of a mass of demons, if he, was, if he was hanging anywhere, it never moved him. He walked right on along just as calm and as quiet as he could be. He was simply unconscious of fear. Anything around him, that's right, whether it was going to happen or whether it wasn't going to happen. He said, he, he knew it was going to happen because God said so. Notice how he, he pairs that. He says, and if you're here to fulfill it too, walk unconscious of fear. Walk unconscious of criticism. Walk unconscious of the world. Walk as you walk with Christ. Walk with him not paying any attention to the right or to the left hand. Just keep moving on. If something comes up in the church, walk with God. If sickness strikes you, walk with God. If the neighbor don't like you, walk with God. Just keep on walking with God. Enoch one day walked like that. You know what he did? He, he walked all the way home with God. He got so far up the road that he didn't want to come back anymore. Now, he's talking about you too. He said, walk with God. The doctor says you're going to die. Walk with God. I'm living this quote, you know. The doctor says that you can't get well. Walk with God. Just walk with God all, for God has promised that I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'll be with you to the end of the world. And he took an oath. Mm. He took an oath that by that covenant, and he gave it to you, that he'd confirm it. Just walk with God. Now you're going to, you're going to have your ups and downs. Don't you worry. You'll go through some briar patches, some sharp rocks over some bluffs, down the hillsides, up the mountains and over the waters. Walk with God. There's so many hills to climb upward. You've heard that old song, but how little it'll seem when you get to the end of the road. Oh, don't you love him? I think when, when Jesus comes, it changes the atmosphere of the room. When he comes, he's always on a mission. Now, he, he goes where he's invited. And he's come where two or three are gathered. He's come. He's made a promise to come to you. Now, whether you see him, whether you feel him, whether any of your senses grab a hold of it, he's give you a promise that I've, I've come to this service. And, and let me just say this to you. He's, he's not a doctor like I visit every week. A doctor that's just adventuring, you know, they're just trying to make life better. And they're just kind of guessing along the way by their past studies and using certain medicines. When he walks in the room, he's got the cure to your problem. Now, he knows before you would ask. Before that, that even Satan could attack you, he had to get permission from God. Now, just think of where you are and how powerful that you are as a people. You're the most powerful people on the earth. 
They're not sitting, they're definitely not sitting in Washington. But you are the most powerful people on the earth. You're of a God race. You're a people of the open book. You're sons and daughters of God that has been better explained to you than, than any people upon the earth. As a matter of fact, this is the golden age, the bride age, and you're, you're the kind of the end of the end. You're a people, if I could just explain it right, that will never need a funeral. Now, no doubt many of you have insurance policies that, that might put you in the ground and place you in a certain place, but you know, I would say that we're not going to use them. Why, why the funeral home won't be needed. They won't have to send flowers. Are you with me now? I'm looking for a rapture. I'm looking for him to step into the room. More than just to heal my cancer that has attacked my body. But he can change this body in the moment of the twinkle of an eye. We're that people. Brother Branham, no matter if he was in 8th and 10th Street in his own tabernacle, presence of God dropping, or whether he was preaching a, an evangelistic sermon or, or the seals or, or any of the great sermons, the presence of God would drop in the building. The atmosphere would change. Hundreds would even stand outside listening through a radio and they would be listening and they were spellbound not by the presence of a man, but by the presence of the mighty angel. Whether it was in Shreveport here, whether it would be, whether it be sermons like on the wings of a snow white dove, where the presence of God would just drop where your pastor sat as a boy. You see, our prophet had to leave the earth, but, but the angel of God didn't. Maybe it would be in the huge fields or coliseums. No matter where it was at, he would stand there because the angel of the Lord told him that he would be with him. He would explain to us that he wouldn't be fearful or afraid because that angel, whatever he told him to do, that's what he would do. Just as Jesus would say, I can do nothing except my Father shows me first. You see, God had an eternal purpose on his mind in sending a message to gather you from all ends of the earth. Evil people that are watching here tonight, maybe laying in a hospital room or maybe like Sister Erica Reagan that's, that's, that's in a hospital now trying to get fluids or Brother Joel Forney that's in the hospital getting fluids. God's the answer. Brother Brandon, would use statements like this he is here. He would say for years, you know I'm waiting on something. And he would tell a story and he wasn't just idly just telling a story. You know I'm waiting on something. And then after a little while he would rear his shoulders back and say, I take every spirit in this building under my control in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We stand here not trying to make ourselves anything, though they be great generals sitting behind us and generals around the world. But let me just say, we have been commissioned with the same word and the same authority. No one will diminish Brother Branham's ministry, but we're still assigned to lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Hallelujah. Now he would stand with the patient between him and he would say, now, you know that there's, you feel something standing between you and I. You feel that. You're nervous. Now, that won't hurt you. That won't hurt you. That's him. 
Brother Jackie, you preached around the world. I'll probably get a little tent in heaven and you're gonna get a great big castle. God bless you for even being here. You're a mighty general. You're a general of general. I wanna be there that day when I hear your name called. But you know, when you're preaching, you can feel that sweep of the Holy Spirit move through the room. There's just none like him. There's just none like him. No doubt you've sat in many rooms and in and, and, and many services if you've traveled a bit. And you just know when that special presence begins to roll in. Don't be afraid of that. Well, I would say, I would say today as we've been hearing about worshiping the Lord, we're the people that ought to really be worshiping the Lord. If there's anything that we should be doing is giving him praise and giving him worship. Now let me just say, God just didn't build you to see if he could build you. He didn't just make a tree to make a tree. He's got a purpose behind having you here. If I could just have a little conjecture here just for a moment and kind of reach out a little bit, I believe that the angel of God was talking about me in that cave. That not even cancer. Not even cancer. So here I stand as a miracle of God that should have been dead a long time ago. Hallelujah. But Brother Ron, you take chemo. Well, let me just say this to you. As a doctor told me the other day, he says, now, if anybody ever gives you a grief and says it's not a miracle that you take chemo, he says, I'll write a letter for you. I'll write a letter for you, and you can let them know that all these other patients are taking the same chemo that you're taking. And after about a year, they're in a wheelchair if they make it a year. He said, you are a miracle, my friend. And we believe it with all of our hearts. Brother Tim and I was with Brother Biscal. I'm just kind of of setting up a platform here for a moment. We were sitting with Brother Biscal and Brother Samuel Ray's house after the meeting and we were sitting and we were just talking about supernatural things and as he would tell one brother tim would tell a story and i would tell a story and after a little while there was a gathering of people i don't know exactly how many came into the room maybe 50 60 people came in and it was just people were videoing it and we began to talk and toward the end Brother Ed would, the presence of the Lord would drop down. and Brother Ed would say, many years ago, I sat at the table like this. And I sat with Brother Branham at the table and he began to talk about miracle after miracle after miracle. And we began to go backwards and forwards. And he said, just in a little bit, he says, Eddie, hanging just inches from you now is that pillar of fire. The other night we were in Elisha's cabin and we began to talk of the supernatural things that we're seeing God do. We're living in a book of Acts. If given time, they'd write a book of Acts and we're living, this is an action message. It's a live life. It's an invincible army that's going forward whether you be in school or whether you be young parents or whether you're the oldest person in the building, you're defying the armies of hell. And every day that you live is a miracle, is a supernatural moment in your life. You might think it's natural, but it's extremely supernatural. You say, Brother Ron, I don't know so much about that. Listen, Satan has swore to destroy you. 
He has did his absolute best to destroy you. He's thrown every demon that he's got to destroy you. But let me just say, you're still standing. When you roll out of bed in the morning, Satan is terrified of what you will do in your house, in your community, on your job. We was in Brother Wayne's home, Brother Wayne Lawson's home, and we were just speaking of these kinds of things, and I don't know, maybe 40, 50 of us was in the room, and so we were sitting around the table, Brother Ben Erickson sitting on the other side, and Brother Ray was there. Presence of God dropped down, Brother Ray began to speak in tongues. I believe in it. We're a tongue-speaking people. Presence of God moved, and Brother Ben was needing his, his business, his pumpkin business blessed. I'll tell you, that God that comes, he don't only make a promise, but he brings results. And he had a bumper crop. He cares about you. I stood, I stood at the coffee shop this week and I was honored to stand at the ribbon cutting. Thank you, Brother Derek. Before all of the Chamber of Commerce and they recognize there's something special about your place. But in this meeting, you were spoke to. Brother Derek, if God is your partner, you better have big plans. How many of you enjoy his coffee? You see, he don't just make a promise. He's got the money in the bank to fulfill it. We serve an unlimited God. And when he heals the worst cancer patient in the world, it does not diminish his power one little iota. You may think that you're unsavable, that you've sinned your way, your day of grace, but something's got you in the building just now. I want you to know there's a God that's rich in mercy. This is no, God is not some artificial put on. This God is a God that's real. But Brother Ron, I've got all kind of addictions in my life and all kind of situations. You let God be God. But I got a lot of critics and I got a lot of things against me. You let God wipe the slate of your life. In Brother Jason Jackson's church, there was a man that was invited at a meeting. Brother Tim and I was there, dying of cancer. No chance to live. Never been in that service ever before. As we stepped off of the stage and went down to where he was at and prayed for him, that man was totally 100% healed. At Brother, at Brother Danny Stevens, Brother Bill Hershberger's daughter, many years ago, had one leg shorter than another. We prayed. God allowed her leg to grow back out. Listen, God can do anything. In a tent meeting, the little girl in a wheelchair couldn't walk. They called me back in and we prayed for that baby and as I felt her feet release. No man can do that, but we're commissioned. And that little girl began to scream, I can walk, I can walk, I can walk. You see, we're people with a checkbook. Now, some of you young guys, that you're, you're just kind of making a little bit of money along and you know, you, you understand what a dollar's all about, maybe a hundred dollars and you can spend that hundred dollars, it goes so quick and you know, but when dad, dad, I need a little money and dad says, well, I can give you this little bit and, and he'll hand you a little bit and you think, I'd, I'd like to have a little more. You know, I, I'd like to have a little more. How many of you guys know what I'm talking about? 
Well, the God that we serve is unlimited. The God that we serve is unlimited. Are you with me? And sometimes we do our God injustice. We don't ask him for big things. But God is a God of big things. Now, now if you was going to give the king, the king of England, a, a birthday present, why, no doubt you would, you would do your best to buy him the nicest birthday present that you could give him. You might spend the best money that you've got. And you would try your best because he, he's the king. That's why we come to a service like tonight. We didn't come to worship a ball player. We definitely didn't come to worship the president. But we come before the king of kings. And we want to give him our best. Now I'm leading to something. There was a woman that heard Jesus was at a, going to be at a certain place. Now, no doubt, maybe in her mind she wondered why he would even go there. But, you know, because they're going to make fun of him. But if I'm ever going to get to him. I want, to, I want to get the best that I can get. And she goes and gets the best perfume that she can get. She buys the best. She gets all of her, all of her money out. And she goes to the place. And you know, you hear Brother Branham say, he says, well, you know, you don't have to spend this much money. She knew if I could only get to him. When I get to him, I want him to know that I'm giving him the, the best that I can get. I don't know how you feel tonight, but I come to this building. My children flew. My children flew here and I provided for them to fly. They came. I'm now going to tell you even my wife don't know this. God put it in my heart to drive here. Three years ago, I drove here. Because God spoke to me. If you can get to Jesus. How that people would drive 17 hours to be in a meeting with Brother Branham and some of them would even die on the way there and Brother Branham would come to their car. And he would pray for them and they would be healed. Three years ago, God touched me. I drove 17 hours to this place. Listen, you may take Brother Tim as just another man. But I don't. I don't. Jesus lives in that body. Jesus lives in these men. When I left after three days of being here, I drove back home. I was sicker than I came down. But when I got back home, God gave me a strength. And I worked every day since that time with these boys. They can tell you that. Let me just say this to you. I drove this time. Not to get to a man. I'm not preaching here to get to a man. I'm not even here to impress you. But if you and I can get to in the room where he's at, If we can get to where he's at, if we can get to his feet and wash his feet with our tears and worship him, I believe that we can leave this building completely different. Satan it must baffle him that here we are a people that fight with our own selves 
Sometimes we have difficulty with, with knowing who we are. But even he knows if you find out who you are, then you become a tormentor to him. You become a live voice that he can't stop. There's a voice behind your voice. There's a life behind your life. You're tabernacling deity itself. God's in his word. And when God's in his word, Satan's always standing near trying to defeat the plan of God. But let me just say this to you. God has given you authority over every devil in hell. Hallelujah. Israel tonight is under intense attack. Their intense attack and their enemy is trying to destroy them with everything that they have. But I want to repeat and say this, whether it goes globally or not, he don't have enough. I don't care if all the countries go against Israel. If God is on your side, you can't lose. Whether it's brain cancer, lung cancer, sugar diabetes, whether the doctor's giving you a report, they don't know how you're living and hospice is your next plan. Let me just say, don't believe their report. I don't care what it looks like. It must be baffling to, to Satan that there you sit in a service like tonight. You walked in one way. You walked in one way and you walk out completely different. You walked in with cancer and you walk out totally free. Maybe you've got a six pack in the car and maybe going to a party later and you walk out after a while and you throw that stuff away never to go back to that party anymore. Drugs are gone, alcohol's gone. Old friends are gone. Because a new man came inside of your heart. Maybe you're saying, well, Brother Ron, I've tried over and over and over again. I've made vows. I've done it over and over again. I get so far and then I fall back, get so far. One night. A night like tonight. To where you get a hold of something that's real. And you'll never go back ever again. A harlot one minute and a princess the next. Hallelujah. Won't you just go ahead and say boo devil. What a moment. Woman thy sins are forgiven. Go thy way and sin no more. Hallelujah. Brother Man said prayer is the key. That's the answer. Prayer changes things. Prayer is the most powerful weapon that was ever put in the control of human beings. Notice these words. There's no atomic bomb or a hydrogen bomb as powerful as prayer. Because you're not praying to a dead God. And because of you are who you are, and your position with God. Satan is powerless before you. Brother Bram said, Satan, you're aware that you're whipped. You have no legal rights. Jesus Christ, my Lord, stripped you of every authority that you had. When he died at Calvary to take away sin and sickness, you're nothing but a bluff. And we're calling your bluff. And know that when the, our Lord came to the tree and cursed the tree, the next day it was withering. And our Lord said to the disciples, have faith in God. 
Therefore, if you say, if you shall say, you shall say to this mountain, be moved and don't doubt in your heart, but believe what you have said is coming to pass. You can have what you have said. I'm going to say something to you. Many times we live defeated lives because we don't pray. We want the world to pray, but what about you? Not just a wishy-washy prayer, but pray with authority. Recognizing who you are. You're just not just a time-bound being. There's an eternal seed with God laying on the inside of you. Speak from that heavenly realm. Now, he says now, and now we are conquerors. We're more than conquerors. We're just walk right into it as an inheritance. More than conquerors. Now, we are de- dealing with a defeated enemy. <laughs> Sickness is defeated. Death is defeated. Hell is defeated. Everything is defeated. I wish I was twice my size. He said, now maybe I feel twice as good. He said, we are disputing with a conquered enemy. Hallelujah. I love this poem. When I fail, he lifts me up. When I fall, he lifts me up. When I fail, he forgives me. When I am weak, he is strong. When I am lost, he is my way. When I am afraid, he is my courage. When I stumble, he steadies me. When I am hurt, he heals me. When I am broken, he mends me. When I am blind, he leads me. When I am hungry, he feeds me. When I face trials, he's with me. When I face persecution, he shields me. When I face problems, he comforts me. When I face loss, he provides for me. When I face death, he carries me home. He is my God. He is faithful, I am his, and he is mine. God is in control. I am on his side. all is well with my soul. The scripture said no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. Every one of us sitting here have different issues that's going on. Every one of us. God watches over every situation of your life. There are times to which that you can't even utter, maybe not even want to tell your mate the mind battles that you're going through. Maybe depression is the issue in your life and you're wrestling in the darkness, feeling like the world is on top of you, that nobody loves you but nobody cares. I want you to know God knows how to go into that cave. Are you with me? He knows how to come to you. Maybe you think that your loved one is lost and you've prayed for decades that they'd come home. Precious friend of mine named Guido had a son that he was praying for and a daughter-in-law. He said, Brother Ron, I prayed many, 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 many prayers for them. A ceremony was coming up and he was praying about being a part of that. And he called me on a special day and he says, Brother Ron, will you? Would you just pray for me that God will be with me? I said, let me just tell you something, Guido. Your prayers will be answered. And Isaiah and her will come home. works. Just a week or so ago, their son, seven years old, was baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'd like to report not only they are, 
but there's more of your family getting ready to come in. Open up the house door. They're coming home. They're coming home. They're coming home. That's just adventuring without authority. Oh no, the same God that spoke to me about Tegido, tell him, tell him it's gonna be all right to be a part of that ceremony because they're coming in. It's the same God spoke to me this afternoon. Tell them their loved ones are coming. Masterpiece of masterpieces was delivered last night. Almost a lawyer stood in the pulpit and took us through the scriptures and showed us our authority. He hadn't heard what Brother Kelly said the night before. So he comes along and reinforces what Brother Kelly preached the night before. And as I sat there in that, in that seat, the Lord spoke to me and said, tonight you'll pray for grace. You'll pray for grace. I did not know the story, but you'll pray for grace for her husband. The lines were splitting, going here and there. Listen, God's always orchestrated. You've came thousands of miles, but he's in the room. And you might think it's even impossible now, but God specializes in impossibilities. He has chosen to take your case. What about your case tonight? Remember our God is still the God of Elijah. He is still the God that ever was. He is still the same God. He moves in the same cycle. He does the same thing. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. One, for I'm under authority and you are having authority. And whatever you say, it'll be going just as you said. Lord, give me men and women tonight to know that you still are in authority. You have authority over cripples, over blindness, over cancer, over all diseases, over sin. He is God who forgiveth all thine iniquities who healeth all thy diseases. Let's just remind him, Satan, you cannot take our life. Satan, you cannot take your life until God has finished with I live this quote. Listen, these are more than just words on a page or words in a, in a, in a quote. These are more than just power quotes. But somebody's going to live it. And I stand here more than just an exercise for you. God can't take your life until your purpose is finished on the earth. God can't take your life, Sister Jeannie, until God's finished. And it ain't over. It ain't over till God says it's over. says about you. I don't care what your diagnosis
diagnosis is, it ain't over. Have faith in God. Oh my, how the devil has to recognize the supreme authority of Jesus Christ. Not me. He hates me. He don't have to mind me, but he has to mind the one that I represent. He has to mind the one that sent me here. Listen to him pray. Satan, you've bound these people. You're exposed tonight. Your grips are lost. You have no legal authority at all. Jesus Christ robbed you and stripped you at Calvary. And we come as the church of the living God. And in the name of Jesus Christ, I adjure thee to leave every person in the building. Come out of the people, thou demons. I adjure thee by the living God. Now we are commissioned to tell him to leave. But you gotta let him go. You can't worship the disease that you're fighting and expect it to leave. You've got to hate that devil that's attacking you. You've got to believe this, I shall live and not die. Brother Ron, aren't you scared when you preach like this that the devil will attack you, you know, next week and you'll have a horrible week? Well, I had a horrible Sunday. And then the last two nights, I've had horrible nights. I've got up at two and three o'clock in the morning and throw up till five o'clock in the morning. But I didn't lay in the bed and whimper. I didn't come here and tell how bad the devil is. I come here tonight. To report for duty and to stand here to tell you that our God is a healer. I am not afraid. Why don't you say it? I am not afraid. Brother Bram says, don't be afraid. Don't stay back and say, well, I, I believe the days of miracles is past. I, I don't know. Don't do that. that. That don't look like a child of Abraham. No matter how far along the promise seems to hold out. It went for 25 years. But if, instead of Abraham getting weaker, Instead of us getting weaker, Brother Tim, we're getting stronger. I wouldn't trade trials with Brother Tim for all the money in the world. But instead of laying in his tears, feeling sorry for himself, he stands in this pulpit and preaches to you because we've got a job to do. We're going home together. If God made a promise and God gave a promise and you believe it, I don't care what takes place, it's yours. Fight the devil on every ounce of ground that he stands on and walk over and take it. Take the sword of the word. I say this to you, cut his head off. God's promises are true. There's nothing that can stop them. They're God's promise. He gave us promise of that just like he did of the, in the children of Israel. The Pentecostal church has come to their Kadesh Barnea. Are we able? Can we do it? 
Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. Can we walk up there and take a hold of the promise and say, it's the truth. I claim it. I own it. It's mine. God gave it to me. I'd like for you, I know you can't see this, but God made the promise. I want you to say this with me. It's the truth. It's the truth. I claim it. I, claim it. I, own, it. I own it. It's mine. It's mine. God, gave it God gave it to me. Listen, if God gives you something, there's not enough devils in hell to take it away from you. He conquered every sickness. He conquered temptation. When the enemy spit in his face, he smote his jaw, he turned to the other side. And when they jerked his beard at his face and spit on him, he never riled back. He conquered the gate of temptation and he took it. So I would say to you tonight, as we stand here and we have just told you how powerful prayer is, let me just give you a couple examples. Moses prayed. Satan, if you want to pay attention here just for a moment. Moses prayed, and the greatest soldiers in the world became fish food. Another one of my family members prayed, and they had thrown him in a lion's den. And a pillar of fire caused those lions to sleep for a while. And he told that king, oh, king, I'll see you in the morning. What about your prayer? More than now, I lay me down to sleep, and I pray, dear Lord, my soul to keep. But your prayer gets God's attention. Mm, mm, mm. Mm, mm, mm. I think we should come into a service like tonight and expect to be victorious. The greatest preachers in the world rehearse to you that you are an invincible army. That's God's thought about you. That's not William Branham's thoughts about you. That's God's thoughts about you. That Satan would be powerless before you. But Satan's job is to come into your mind and to try to convince you off of your position. But you'll stay in the word of God. Whether you feel like shouting, jumping, hanging on the chandeliers or not, if you stand flat-footed on the Word of God and you take your promise, this is mine. I believe it. I want to report to you that the gates of hell cannot prevail against you. Now, well, Brother Ron, but you know we've been preached sermons like this for years, but what if tonight's your night? You see, this morning at 4.15, I marked the time. And one of my sickness is going to the, to the restroom. When I came back into the dark room of Brother Tim's, he, he gave us his bedroom. Thank you, Brother Tim. It's a nice one. A nice mattress you put on there. <laughs> hey, I bought a new truck so he could chauffeur it around, so if he gets the fever, don't y'all get mad. And blame Brother Ron. If somebody wants to buy it for him, that'd be good too. I just don't feel led to leave him mine. <laughs> I 
I gotta get home. <laughs> now, you're told over and over again that you're an invincible army. And that came from the eternities. And you're told over and over again that God gave you a checkbook. And Jesus Christ signed it, but you gotta fill it out. You got you gotta fill it out. Now maybe you got a son and daughter that's away from God and and it seems like that there's no way that they'll ever come back. I want to tell you, I'm one of those guys that was a prodigal. And I had a mom and daddy that were believers of this message. Even turned me over to the devil. It worked. Are you with me? But God rich in mercy rewrote the book of my life. Are you with me? He rewrote the book of my life. And I want to tell you that this message works. I don't care how many critics come along. I don't care how many articles are put on the internet. It can't stop this. You heard Brother Wayne talk about in the last 10 years. In the last 10 years. What has taken place in his life? What has taken place? His children, they moved. He's now the pastor of the church there. An incredible church, a powerful church, a living church. Yeah. You live in that area and, and you're not going to church, go to that church. Amen. <laughs> You've heard me say before, if, you're, if it's dead, find one that's alive. I'm talking about more than just the denominations. Some churches are like morgues. No amens, no shouts, hallelujah, no music. They've taken on a church of Christ tradition. I'm not going there tonight, but anywhere Jesus is, there's a lot of noise. <laughs> now, let me, let me just say, how many husband and wife pairs are here tonight? Husbands and wives, I want you to just raise your hands. and Maybe in the air, hold one another's hand just for a second. All right, that's really good. God bless you. Sister Mandy, can I pick on you for a moment? Yeah, yeah, it's a, she, yeah she just seemed to be beaming back there. Now, Sister Mandy, Brother Phillips got all the money in the world. And you go to town and you buy $252 worth of groceries and you come home and say, well, uh, honey, I bought $252, $252 of groceries today. I hope it don't offend you. Honey, we have an unlimited bank account. And she goes and he says, honey, you don't understand, I'm limited. And, 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 and you, know, you know, she's got an old car. She drives by one that's sparkling and just to her liking, she spends $152,000. And she comes home and she says, I, I bought a car today. And he says, honey, you don't understand. You don't have to apologize. say to you, the days of miracles are not past. <laughs> Hallelujah. You don't have to come with an apologetic atmosphere. I'm sorry, God. I'm sorry. Poor old pity me. You're the wife of heaven. And these signs shall follow them. should we fear? Why should we be afraid? Why should we be timid? God's handed us the all that's in the book. Every promise in the book is mine.
every promise. We do not have to settle for less that's in our promise. Well, Brother Ron, it don't look like it's going to happen. Well, just think about it. It's not about what you think that it looks like. Abraham looked fatherless. But he kept telling what God told him to say. Sarah looked like it couldn't happen. But Satan, hang around a little while. Brother L, we got promises. We got promises. We do not have to live like underprivileged children. God says, I'll make you the head and not the tail. I'll bless you coming in and I'll bless you going out. I'll bless you. You are the queen. Now, if you'd have been looking for a while, it looked like the tent was empty, just Abraham and Sarah. But God said, I'll make you the father of nations. When he took him out, he showed him the sand of the sea. Can you count them? No, that'd be impossible. So shall thy seed be. He showed him the stars of the heaven. Can you count them? so shall thy seed be. Well, now we can look back thousands of years and say, I'm one of them. God said he'd give us our children, he'll give us our children. Are you with me now? He said he'd watch over you, he'll watch over you. I just want to drop a couple more things here. You're better protected than the President of the United States of America. that just for a moment. Those guys that take care of the president, Eagle One, when they take care of him, they can only protect him from things that they hear about on the internet or the things that they see. But in another realm, there's demons that try to destroy you. And they're in attack for you because you're sons and daughters of God. The pillar of fire just wasn't in Houston, but there's a pillar of fire watching over you. And Satan can see that fire living on the inside of you. He can see it. And you're his enemy. But you are not alone. You are not alone. God has dispatched angels to watch over you. I'm going to need a quote, Brother Ron. Okay. God asked... Amram and Josebed make a basket, yep. pitch it, and place that baby Moses that you know that the angel met you, and there the baby is. I want you to put it in that crocodile-infested waters. Here's God's sense of humor. I'm going to let the devil's kingdom raise him. I'm going to let the devil's kingdom pay for his education. But one day I'm going to tell him who he is. You may feel like you're in crocodile infested waters. And you may feel so alone. 
Let me just give you a glimpse of what's happening. Standing on your basket. It's Gabriel himself. And there's tens of thousands of angels standing on the sides of the river. And every time a crocodile comes up to destroy you, Gabriel pushes it back down. Sleep on, baby, die, sleep on. Now, in a few days, there's going to be some people that walk into the room. It's going to be real special because it's in the promise. All right. It's going to be a brown headed girl. Maybe her hair will be at her knees. And she'll look like her wedding picture. Her name will be Karen. Now this isn't a fairy tale. I'm, I'm just telling you what the vision says. Now, now, people say that you can't have visions or God don't do that no more. But I brought, I brought little, my little buddy up here a while ago. And the devil whispered in my ear for three years. Whitney couldn't have children. And Davy was crushed in an accident. And he couldn't have children. But the vision said Isaac was on his way. Listen, you, you saw it. You saw his little bow tie. You saw it. You can say, I, I believe that. Maybe you didn't see the vision. You just heard about it. Brother Jeremy's here from the church. You know the story. I walked into the room and they said, let me tell you his name. I said, no, I'll tell you his name. It's Isaac Jackson Breeden. That's right. That's absolutely right. God wasn't guessing. Brother Branham wasn't guessing. We're going to take a half a step this way, and they're going to take a half a step this way. Now, I'm not going to just guess here for you now. Some of you walked into this building one way, and you're going to walk out another. Father, Joshua, I remember, I'm going to bring you into, you into a public audience. We were in Switzerland. You've been a believer for years, raised in an incredible family. You were standing there as a deacon standing. And when I stopped by you as I walked out from preaching, I said, you're wanting a supernatural experience with God. Did he do it? I walked by you and said that one, on another, maybe a couple years later, God's calling you to preach. He's been with you at every service. If he calls you, he will equip you. Isn't that right? We know that's the truth. We know that's the truth. Your father was in the meeting in North Carolina. And in North Carolina, he had a great burden on his heart. We'd been in a tent meeting the week before. And in the tent meeting, he had a great burden. And as, as the service was coming to an end, there was a man that had walked down the aisle, and he had crutches and braces on. And before, even while we preached, even before... The, the sermon was over. That man walked to the front 
about where the edge would be. And that man took those braces off and he throwed those things back and he ran back to the back. He didn't get to me, he got to him. And your father had a great burden on his heart because there was a letter in his attache case that had a lot of vicious things about it. And the Lord spoke from the pulpit Guido, pay no attention to that letter. It's of the devil. I didn't know that letter was there, but God did. And next week, Brother Guido was standing at the end of the service and standing behind the curtain. And I never forget this because there was a lot of resistance. I didn't hear tonight, but there was a lot of resistance to the service. And, and, and there was two preachers that were turning against the message. But you can't stop God. I said, if God can't operate out here, you'll operate behind the curtain. And when I step behind the curtain, you're getting ready to go preach. When I step behind the curtain, uh, there was two kids, Joe Green's son and and daughter-in-law. And God gave them a baby. God gave them a baby and it was born exactly a year later. Another couple had needed a baby for 17 years and played for a baby. And God gave them a baby. And now they're getting ready to have a second baby. Where I'm coming to you, Guido was standing there and he was worshiping the Lord. And I said, Brother Guido, there's a train coming for you. It'll be all right to get on it. And in just a few weeks, that train came and he stepped beyond this realm of tears. There was a man standing there that had sat in the service, and this is why I'm going there. He'd sat in the service for decades. His name was Terry. And in that spot, maybe you've sat here for years and you haven't made a move for God. Won't you call your name right there? And Terry, I'd hunted in his tree stand. He'd been a friend, but he wouldn't make a move. Church was just entertainment. It was a place to go. It was the place to be. He was a part of the good old boy club. I'll never forget it. He was standing there beside the wall. Brother Homer Longora was standing beside of him. He said, I can serve a God like that. And in that moment, we began to pray. God changed his life. We talk about Hattie Wright and her two sons. What about you tonight? What about you? I knew you when you were a little girl. What about your family? What about the ones that are wavered? Why don't you call their name right now? Brother Ron, you listen, I walked by that that piano last night, and she was sitting there playing it, and God spoke to me. Said, tell her 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 family's coming home. Sister Betty said, I walked in with one husband and I walked out with another one. Maybe tonight that you walked into this building one way. Can you believe? I want to ask you. A greater than Solomon is here. Maybe you've driven hundreds of miles. And you come with expectation. Maybe the doctor just told you that there's tumors even in your female organs. And fear strikes you. You know when it when it's in when it's in another prayer request and it's somebody else, it don't affect you quite as much as when the doctor's looking in your eyes and say, I, I, I'm sorry to tell you, but the scans are showing that you have cancer. But I want to tell you tonight that. He's here to tell you that I can dissolve that for you. Hallelujah. 
This has come back for the third time and I'll say it now. Maybe your marriage is on the rocks. You don't need to go to some marriage counselor. The counselor's in the building. The counselor's in the building. And if you just fall in love with Jesus and you receive the Holy Ghost like never before, two people can come back in a union and be happy again. Brother Ron, it looks like a total loss. A lady I prayed for one time, she's there on a Sunday morning. She said, Brother Ron, my husband's left me and he's living with another woman. He's a thousand miles away. I want him back. I want him to be a real Christian. The next Sunday morning, I'm at that same place preaching. And after I get done preaching, there's a man comes to the altar. The audience erupts. I don't know what's going on. He does. That man said at the very same time, they calculated it, at the very same time that we were praying, God spoke to him and said, go home. And he drove. He drove all the way. And on Tuesday morning, he was sitting on her porch. And he said, you may not have me back, but something spoke to me to come home. You're not some wishy-washy people. You're people with a sword in your hand. You're that people. Why don't you tell your neighbor, I'm the people that he's talking about. We have been tested. We have been trained. We have been adopted as sons and daughters of God. You say, Brother Ron, I feel like the weakest person in this building. I've got good news for you. When the weakest of Christians go on their knees, the kingdom of hell shakes. And I finish with this. It's time to shake him. Brother Ron, you, God called you to shake hands. Father, you told me last night at 4.15 that you would stand with me, and you have. You have given me the strength to preach this message tonight, and it's not an if it's going to happen. We believe. Now, Satan... You have heard the word of God. Take your cold, clammy hands off of God's children. You were defeated at Calvary. And you took one step after another on your way up that hill. No doubt a man named Simon Serene that was asked to carry your cross. Looked into your eyes. You wasn't doing that for yourself. You was doing that for us. You could have called 10,000 angels and it would have changed the whole scene. 
Father, you even forgave your persecutors. Those that cried out against you, you forgave them. You did that because we could be healed and we could be saved. And Lord Jesus, we stand here reporting for duty, feeling your presence all over this building. You've touched lives. Oh, no doubt a critic would look and say, well, that's some kind of a fleshly manifestation. Well, just stick around and watch. Just stick around and listen to the reports that'll come in. These signs shall follow them that believe. Lord, we're nothing without you. But you're the one that made the promise. And Brother Branham asked us, do you believe? Yes, I believe. Yes, I believe. Now, if I was standing in the prayer line and I was standing there and I walked before that great presence, standing there with cancer in my brain, in my lungs, lymph nodes, now taking chemo for three and three and a half years, and my card got drawn. Maybe never met the man before. He would tell me, he said, now there's something standing between you and I. That's him. Ron, don't fear that now. Your name is Ronald, Ronald Spencer. You live in Grottoes, 309 Pine Creek Lane. Yes, yes, that's right. The doctors have told you that there's a curse of cancer all over you. Yes, that's, that's right. You're a preacher of the message of the hour. Yes, that's right. Do you believe, Ron? I would say absolutely. I believe with all my heart. Now, Lord Jesus, tonight I've stood here and preached your word. Not just to an audience of maybe 500 people, but I preached tonight in this atmosphere, believing that Lord, you can heal not only their body, but can heal mine. Yes, yes, Lord, knowing that this is life and death. Now, Father, we're not here to play games because we know one of these mornings you'll change our body in a moment in the twinkle of an eye. Can we have faith for that? I say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, I believe. That's absolutely the truth. I believe it with all my heart. Like Mary said, be it unto me according to thy word. Now, Lord Jesus, you see Erica Reagan, Parker. You wicked devil. You naughty enemy. That girl has a purpose to be a mother, a purpose to be a wife, a preacher's daughter. I don't care what it looks like. From the dust to the stars, we believe your word. We believe a report that you were wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities and you took those stripes at Pilate's judgment hall that we could be healed. And Lord Jesus, we ask you to go not just to her, but to the many other requests that has come before us even this afternoon. Now, Father, as we as ministers will come into this prayer line, a very sacred thing, I ask you, Father, that you would touch everyone. You're the healer. We're just commissioned. And our faith is to expect you to do what you said you would do. And we believe it now. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Our possible. Oh.
Jesus is here. sing that. Lord, I believe. I'd like for Sister Whitney, are we coming this way, brother? Sister Whitney, if you would bring Zoe around this way. for you just go out this way and around and down this aisle right here. Come right down in this aisle right here for prayer. Amen. Come and believe. I'm going to walk in one way and walk out another. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Maybe if you feel like you don't want to be able to not able to stand for that long. If you want to just go ahead and make your way on down here. If you feel to come at this time, just come on down. The brothers will help you through the line. Amen. Let's just come believing, expecting from God. Oh, Lord, I believe. Oh. 
should I worry when giants come calling my name?
Well, I've got victory over the enemy and the world.
Blessed be the name of the Lord. Go ahead, just keep praising him. Just keep praising him. If there's anybody on the face of this earth that's got a right to praise him, that's the bride of Jesus Christ. It is your God-given right. Opportunity. Amen. I was just reading it here and Brother Brown going and praying for somebody, and it was an impossible situation. Impossible situation. He went in there to pray for her, and he said, With this, in just a few moments, she'll be home. Just a few days, whatever it was. She was had a bunch of unbelieving people around her. Her family didn't believe, but she had a husband that believed. Amen. When Brother Branham said that, he said, let me tell you something. Goodbye. They said, where are you going? I'm going home to prepare base. I'm going there to be get ready for my wife to come home. Because that man said, thus saith the Lord. He's coming and he, she's going to be there. Hello. We got thus saith the Lord tonight. We shall be there and our offspring with us. So why don't you just start waving? Goodbye. Goodbye.
Hallelujah. 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 This world is going off into chaos. We're going off into glory. This world's going off into destruction. We're going off in a new body. Hallelujah. My, have you enjoyed yourself tonight? about well there's a lot of people that knows they got set free know they got healed know they got delivered I'm shouting because I know they did you say well have you seen it have you heard it don't matter the word said they did the word said they shall lay hands upon the sick and they shall recover so I can go ahead and praise God right now says or thinks or whatever. They can do whatever they want to. But as for me and my house, hallelujah, I'm going to serve the Lord and I'm going to praise him as long as I got breath. He said, well, it ain't my custom. It ain't my culture. Well, the Bible says, praise you the Lord, all ye lands. That's every culture. That's every nation. That's every person. We're singing praise the Lord, everybody, everybody, dance for joy, everybody, shout for joy, everybody, let everything that hath breath, everybody, praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just lay hands on the one next to you, around brother, brother, sister, sister. And let's just thank God for what we have seen and witnessed tonight. Before we hear of one miracle or see one miracle, let's thank Him for it right now. Before you see one son or one daughter, let's thank Him for it right now. Before you see your, your, your marriage restored, you start thanking Him for it right now. Because His word said He's going to do it. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you, Father. We thank you, Lord, for coming down among us, Lord, and ministering the hearts and lives, Lord. You are mighty, God. You're worthy of our praise. You're worthy of our glory. You're worthy of our honor, Lord. You truly are Jehovah Rapha. You are our healer. You are our deliverer. You are our satisfying portion. You are all that we ever had, Lord, or ever had need of, Father. We love you, Father. We praise you, God. We thank you, Lord. I want to thank you right now for every healing. I thank you for every marriage that's being restored. I thank you for every prodigal that's coming home. I thank you for everything that you've done in this building. The hearts you feel back again with joy. The love that's been restored to a people. Oh, God, we thank you, Father. For truly, you are worthy of our praise. How we love you, Father. How we love you, Father. Let's sing that in B flat. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. If you feel to be dismissed, you're more than welcome to this fellowship in the back again tonight. If you feel to just stay here and pray a little longer, whatever. It's, we own the building. We own the building. So, Lord gave it to us, so I feel like if he gave it to us, we ought to take advantage of what he gave us. Amen. He's unlimited. So if you want to pray and praise God for a while, just feel free, whatever you'd like to do. Thank you.
I believe somebody wants to give you thanks. Jesus, oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus.